Hey, what's up, my dudes? So, this is my official uh, take on what it is to have game sense in a video game. Now, I do think that I have a unique take on this, considering that I actually train people as a coach and as a trainer to develop game sense. But we don't call it that specifically. It's called something a little bit different. Now, let me explain where I'm coming from before I go any further with this video. When I hear a lot of other YouTubers and a lot of other content creators discuss game sense, I honestly believe they can discuss anything they want because they're so good at the game that everything they do seems to make sense with what they're telling you. But I don't think that they've given any trainable strategies for you to become better at developing your own sense of game sense. And that, I believe, is where I can come in to help you. I've been helping athletes and other coaches as well, other trainers, with athletics and enhancement strategies to develop in-game actual sense. Now, there's two different ways that we describe this. Game sense means you did something logical. It made sense within the game. That's the only definition that I'll accept when somebody says you have game sense. The, <laughs> the way that you train game sense has to do with behavioral thinking more than it has to do with anything else. That, to me, is not as coachable or as trainable as something that is known as game awareness. And that is what I want to discuss with you today. Game awareness is something that you can train and that you can develop so that you have what everyone seems to refer to as game sense. So if I piqued your interest with this video, stick around my dudes and let's get into it. So in sports and fitness and in coaching, game awareness does equate to a form of game sense, but probably not in the way that you would be thinking. It is literally a term of sense is, such as visual cues, your hearing, what you can feel, and then your thought process for your awareness and what you're seeing on the field. A part of this has to do with your experience and your ability to anticipate and predict your enemy opponent. So I'm literally going to discuss with you guys five different things today. Um, sight, sound, feel, behavioral thought processing, which is going to be a little bit more in depth, and anticipation, which is arguably the thing that we all need to go after if we're going to develop our game awareness into our senses. So, let's get right into what it is to have the sense and the awareness of visual cues. Alright, so let's take a look at visual cues within the athletic realm, and then I'm going to tie it into how you can utilize a training practice for visual cueing within Destiny itself. So, how many of you guys have ever heard of a device known as the strobe glasses? I'm going to show you right now. Here's what they look like, and here's what we use for our athletes. Now it's really cool because on the side of the glasses you can actually change the intensity and the duration, how often it happens on the side, so you can get more strobes or less strobes depending on the technical expertise of the athletics or his actual experience with these glasses. Uh, why does that matter, right? Why do we use these in athletics? What these device, uh, what this device trains you to do, it trains you how to ignore unnecessary stimulus because now you have to very specifically focus your brain on the stimulus in front of you that matters most. So you are now being trained to search for and seek out a very specific stimulus. So for football, for example, they're taught to look for a football very quickly. If you're a wide receiver, you, want, you run out really far, turn around very quickly and find that ball within the air. If you're a soccer player, same idea, right? You can turn and react quickly to find the thing that you're looking for so that you can get a better reactivity time on that object. Now, how does that apply to something like Destiny? There is a definition I think we need to cover when it comes to visual cues. We need to look at objects, pictures, and symbols, anything that might be identifiable within Destiny the video game. With the three classes that we have, Hunter, Warlike, Titan, everything has something identifiable. What I'm going to train you to do is look for a singular, identifiable trait on a character model that you want to make your challenge. Now, what I mean by this, if you are playing in a competitive match against somebody that you know to be a great challenge to you, you can identify them through a symbol or a pattern on their person, visually speaking, so that you can see them more quickly and react to them more quickly. If you wanted to disengage, maybe face them two-on-one -on -one instead of 1v1, and that would be a clever play against a better opponent. The other thing would be avoiding the red light sniper rifle, because the more quickly you can spot the sniper rifle scope, the more quickly you can disengage so you don't get taken out first or a pick within something like Trials of Osiris. At the highest level of competitive play, 
You've seen people like Kami Cakes and a few others constantly change up not only their weaponry so things look and sound differently, but also their shaders, their loadouts, as well as their armor, so that people have a lot of trouble identifying what character model they actually are, so that they're visually less easy to see. And that's how you can mess with your enemy on the opposing side of this. It's a really unique way of messing with somebody's visual cues to distort them in-game. If you're interested in learning more about reaction timing as well as anticipation timing regarding something like a sniper rifle training session, I have an entire video dedicated to simple reaction time and choice reaction time. I'll leave that in the, uh, the box in the corner that says click here, that whole thing. Alright, it's time to discuss audio cues and how that applies to game awareness within gaming. For coaching, we use a lot of audibles. We use callouts and stuff like that. Those are audio cues technically, but they're more accurate, accurately described as verbal. So I don't know that that is relevant to gaming in the sense of gaining game awareness and game sense. So I can't really use that. But what I can tell you is that for gaming, and it has been my experience that if you understand the audio that you are listening to from your opponent, then you have a very good indicator of how you should be reacting to what they're doing. The best example that I can give you is if you are fighting with an individual and he is around the doorway, you dro you know go to go through that doorway and you hear him jump and float, and you understand that he's baiting that door. So that's an audio cue from a jump, depending on the class, warlock, hunter, whatever, but you know what he's intending based on that audio cue. I think audio cues in Destiny are very clean, actually. So you can understand what weapon they're using based on audio cues. Crimson has a very specific sound to it. Um, auto rifles like the Summoner, you understand you're getting shot at by a 600 round per minute, for example. Pulse rifles, if it's fast firing versus slow firing, those are all audio cues that you can listen for so you know what you're dealing with. That's the best I can give you in regards to how to learn a type of game sense when it comes down to audio, what you're listening for. The game awareness side of it comes from you understanding who you're dealing with. If they're Crimson, you understand that if he just got into a fight with somebody and he won his 1v1, even if you didn't see him, you know he has full health because you heard the Crimson. I really hope that's making sense. This is how you develop that side of it, by getting better at listening to what's going on around you, and then you can react accordingly so that you make a better game awareness and situational type of play. So here's going to be a fun one to try to figure out and discuss with you guys. What is feel? Um, the best way I can put this is that a feeling has more to do with an intuitiveness or a gut instinct. There's a perception of ability which results from in-game experience and then there's instinctual decision having to do with the context surrounding the situation in which you find yourself in. In short, how you interpret what your interpretation is in that moment. This is what we call a gut reaction or a gut instinct. Athletes have these a lot of the time in game when they go against their coach's call. For one, the athlete is in the moment, in the game. He's felt the opponents close up on him, against him, how they move, how they think, and how they play. Even if the coach sees something, the athlete himself is the one that is dealing with the opponent, so they understand what types of things may need to be done based on their own in-game experiences and what's going on what's uh, directly in front of them. So that's the best way that I could put this. How does that apply to Destiny, though, regarding in-game? I think it's best if I describe how we should, how we train this with athletes before I talk about how it can be developed with Destiny. There's a such thing that we train known as the golfer's instinct, and I know this sounds a little silly, but I think it's incredibly, incredibly relevant to video gaming, since there are a lot of high-stake things going on with the video game, and there's also a ton of things mentally as well as physically like motor control that happen that can deliver either a positive or a negative, especially as you become more proficient at the game or better at the game itself. So, performing under high stakes, it's very nerve-wracking. Golf and video games have both of this, by the way. Uh, you could also notice something like this if somebody was singing, and then suddenly, and you know, in the, not the match, but when they're singing on stage, they then suddenly sing off-key, and that nervousness can really wreck somebody. Um, delivering your best when other people are judging, or you know that it matters, all of a sudden, your gut instinct and your feelings can really betray you. That is what I'm referring to, that feeling. It could be a panic, it could be a lack of um, meditative state. Those type of things can mess with your interpretation of what's going on in moment and you make a poor decision. 
Competitive athletes choke all the time in high pressure situations. You can overreact to a situation, you can underreact to a situation. Thoughts in your head can betray you because you are not in a clearly you know, intuitive state. That is what I'm referring to with this. And this happens all the time in golf. If you take golf players, what's been found is a beginner, someone that doesn't have a lot of reps under their belt, they tend to think very carefully about their foot placement, the angle, and how to swing their club. Whereas an expert already knows instinctively what to do. The expert's interpretation of what they're looking at and how to go about it is already ingrained in them. So if you're going to train you have to first consider to get rid of your gut instinct in the initial stages of this training. You have to get the basics down or more reps under your belt with harder activities such as Trials of Osiris, competitive play. You have to play against people that are arguably better than you. That is how you can increase a gut or an instinctual reaction and interpretation of in-game activity, meaning you know what to do because your gut feeling told you to. That's the best answer I could give you on how to feel the appropriate thing to do while playing in-game that isn't woo-woo and hocus-pocus, all right? So, gut instinct is essentially your in-game interpretation of the events going on and how you respond to those. All right, my dudes, need you to bear with me on this one, okay? Behavioral patterns is equated to a form of predictability. In order to coach somebody that is looking for a pattern in the behavior we then have to learn what it is as a coach what behaviors actually are or what they should be viewed at the best way i could put this in the shortest possible sentence is that behaviors are typically things that are learned and it's incredibly hard when a pattern is established to unlearn that pattern with athletics you see it all the time in volleyball how so many jumps can indicate what type of spike they're planning on doing, whether it's a hardcore spike or if they're gonna, you know, um, tip or dip the ball. Uh, in football, you can tell when someone's going to fake a play, for example, if you watch their behavior enough times to realize what their body language is indicating. These are all learned behaviors representing a pattern that that person has established and ingrained within their physiology. The same thing applies in destiny. Think about a shotgun runner. Left stick forward. They learned this behavior. They might rush together in a group of one or more or two or more. Um, that type of thing, because they know it works, how do you recognize that pattern as quickly as possible? Uh, let's say somebody likes to bait the doorway. They run forward, then they move backwards, then they do it again because they're trying to get you to go through the doorway that they're trying to bait so they can land on top of you with a shotgun or with the sidearm. That is a learned behavior and it is predictable if you know what you're looking for. There's a lot of other in-game behavior patterns that you can recognize. For example, if somebody is tilted, they might t-bike your character, especially if you've been taking them out all game. If someone sends you a negative message online, that's another indication of poor behavior patterns, which means that person is probably immature and therefore can be taken advantage of if he, for example, doesn't like you shooting him with the Jotun, the toaster, right? Or if you're hanging out in the back as an anchor and you're pulse rifling the guy and he can't seem to get close enough to get you with a shotgun, that is a behavior that he is unfortunately showing himself how bad he is at that, right? So those are all things that you can learn to identify. The goal of behavioral pattern as a sense is that you're learning how to quickly identify which behaviors you're dealing with in game. If you're in a six man game, there's six potential behaviors that you're dealing with. If you put everything together between what we've talked about so far, between the visual, between the audio cueing, and between the gut instinct that you're now developing towards someone and their behavior, you have a better chance of beating them in game. The top players in this game do this as quickly as possible because they have developed these things and they have more reps under their belt is what I call it and they're just incredibly good at that type of stuff. And when I say that type of stuff, I mean they've already learned and identified your play styles and your in-game behavior through your characteristics so that they can better take advantage of how to counter play against you and beat you in game. The best players in the world, for example, Sewa Labrella, or whatever his name is, can do this within the fraction of a second to make a split section in-game, split second in-game gut reaction decision to beat you in-game. And he's so good at it that he does it all the time, it's not even, it's second nature to him. So I hope that helps explain the behavioral pattern. It's essentially you being predictable. 
And the more predictable you are, the easier it is for someone to figure you out. That can be a huge negative, or if you know how to recognize that could be a huge gain for you. So you can train that by looking for behaviors that are similar enough to one another that you don't have it in your arsenal of gameplay so that you know what to look for and you can then develop a counter strategy to how that person plays the game. That is how you develop behavioral pattern and looking for that development of what things are predictable in game, predictable behaviors. Anticipation could otherwise be called, how did he know I was there? Or how did he know I was going to do that? The players that have the best anticipation appear to have the best reaction times. Now, why do I say that this is a game sense? Again, if you put everything together, what I've talked about, then you know that anticipation is actually something that is learned. This person is anticipating your behavior because he's watched you, he's identified you, and he understands what you're going to do next before you've even made that decision. The most likely thing. It is what to expect. So if you are having a tough go of it and you change your, complete, your behavior completely, you may give them a run for their money. Now, how does this apply from sports? In games, it's a little bit different, but in sports, we understand how somebody has been coached based on our knowledge of the coach on that team, as well as what their past record is. Anticipating a good player in Destiny works the same way that you would do if you were scouting out an enemy team. I say enemy, I don't mean it in the negative sense, but if you were to scout out a team that had incredibly good players on it, let's say, for example, a team that won state championship soccer last year, you might send a scout to go check out the team to see what they're doing, how they're playing, and how they interact together so that you can anticipate and know what to expect when you face off against them. We do this in Destiny all the time especially in the competitive realm like Trials of Osiris and the competitive game. Heck, we even do it in quick play sometimes just because. What you do is you check out the other player. You see who had the best KD last game, whether or not they're on a win streak, how well they're doing, what weapon they're using. So if they have a weapon like a pulse rifle and they have, let's say, um, 5,000 kills on that pulse rifle, you can fully expect that he's very good with that pulse rifle and you can anticipate that he's going to use it then you can counteract by using something different. Maybe you use a sniper rifle, or maybe you use an SMG to get close in there and close the gap to really mess with his gameplay. You can then become the counter to that person because you can anticipate what he is going to do next. All right, guys. I hope that makes sense. So just to recap on what we went over in this video today, these are the game senses. You have sight, sound, you have feel, behavioral patterns, and anticipation. These collectively refer to what is termed in sports and should be termed in gaming, if we're going to redefine it, as game awareness. And that is trainable. The awareness of these senses, breaking them down individually, can then put them into something you can train and develop so you can have a better in-game response and make improvements to your game that are professionally developed by a coach who does it with athletes. There's a lot of stuff in this video and this took me a heck of a long time to come up with and I really did try to keep it as short and informative as possible and I know we're already at like the 18 minute mark. I would really appreciate you guys if you could leave a like and a sub on my video for this if you want to see more things like this or if you want each of these game senses to be broken down a little bit more thoroughly because I can definitely take them and break them down more thoroughly so you have a better understanding of it as well as give you training exercises like reps and sets just like an exercise of how you can do things to get better on your own that I couldn't give you in this video otherwise it'd be an hour long. So thank you guys so much for your time today. I can't tell you how much it means to me that you're here watching these videos. Thank you so much. Any questions, any comments, any examples of stuff that you want to see in the future, put them in the comment section down below. All right. Love all you guys. Remember to keep it zen out there, my dudes.